we all have our things, you know, like those things that bug you that shouldn't bug you, but they do anyway. Like one of my things was the term stand mounters. You know, that's for speakers that aren't floor standers. They sit on bookshelves. So just call them bookshelf speakers. But people call them stand mounters because, you know, speaker stands are a thing and, you know, I barely use them. But that was until I got those speakers, the Wharfdale Evo 4.2s, because they're stand mounters. My name's Taps, this is 0102 Studio, and this is a review of said speaker, the Wharfdale Evo 4.2s. Evo, short for Evolution, these speakers look similar to the arranged topping Elysian speakers. They also get some of that trickle-down tech, without the high price tag. They are engineered to give you the sound and scale of a floor stander, but without being a floor stander. This is a big ass speaker, make no doubt about it. In this modern era of hi-fi, manufacturers seem to be content on designing their speakers small and attempting to wring out every last bit of performance from a smaller enclosure. It's refreshing to see a manufacturer taking an opposite approach. The Evo 4.2s are the larger of two stand mount options, the other being a two-way design. The speaker looks very much modern old school, especially in this walnut finish. It looks very much like a speaker and not like a high-end piece of furniture. The cabinet is curved around the back. The curve, aside from looking cool, also helps reduce standing waves. The 4.2 is a three-way speaker. Up top is an AMT, air motion transducer tweeter. In the middle, a two-inch soft dome driver. And for bass is a six-inch black woven Kevlar driver. The AMT tweeter is much different than a traditional soft dome. The larger surface area allows for lower distortion and wider bandwidth. The AMT just doesn't go very low, so they implemented the mid-dome for the smoother transition between the lows and the highs. The bass reflex or slot loaded port is at the bottom, which makes placing the speaker easier. The speakers are rated at 8 ohms with a minimum impedance of 4. The sensitivity is 90 dB, so they're super easy to drive. The binding posts on the back are pointing in different directions, and they accept banana plugs. The grills are magnetic, though they aren't the best looking things. But given the fact that there's a larger soft dome mid-range driver, I was inclined to keep the grills on when not in use, as I was scared that my son might depress it when left unsupervised. I set these up in our living room, which was the most ideal place for them. It's a modest sized room, allowing the speakers to fill the space properly. Just note that the speakers do require a bit of time to break in, a couple hours at least, for me, overnight. In a larger basement, the Wharfdales were able to fill that room quite well, just at a higher volume. Most of the time, I have the speakers about 8 feet apart and towed in a bit towards my listening position. Because the bass reflex port is at the bottom, they can be placed closer to a wall, and I did just that. Because we have kids in our living room, I kept the speakers about 6 inches away from the wall. In our basement, however, where the kids never go, I was able to pull them out about a foot and a half. It's engineered to give you the sound and scale of a floor stander speaker without actually being a floor stander speaker. I get it, but I don't sort of get it at the same time. Like, like I get their philosophy on like, hey, we're going to give you a floor stander without giving you a floor stander. But if I'm being honest, like... For most people that don't have a large room, like these probably won't fit on a bookshelf and they come with a, well, they don't come with, but there is a speaker stand made by Wharfdale that is suited for these speakers. And you sort of need to factor in a stand for said speakers to get them at the right ear height. And that's probably why Wharfdale sent along the stand. It's a nice looking stand, but if you, factor in the cost of a stand with these speakers you might as well just kind of buy a floor stander because they make two of those two in this lineup so i get it don't get it the stands are made for these speakers so they are shaped the same way these speakers are shaped they're just black stands with spikes and wharfdale does supply these little pucks so the spikes of the speaker stand doesn't like damage your floors 
since they are the same shape as the speaker, they just uniformly look great. And they put the speakers at a really good height for listening. So if you are looking for stands, I mean, the Wharfdale stands are the ones and you definitely have to factor that into the cost of these speakers. The Evo 4.2s cost about $14.99 Canadian. I've seen them priced as low as $12.99 and as high as $16.99. $14.99 is a really good price for the amount of speaker that you get. The Silver 100s behind me are, I think, almost the same. Sometimes I've seen those priced at $17.99 in places. It's a lot of speaker for the money. And uh, if you're looking for bang for your buck, there's a lot of bang. There are a few different speakers in this range. There's a smaller two-way bookshelf speaker, and then there are two floor standers, one with similar drivers, one with bigger drivers, and then two different center channels. All of the speakers are fairly large, and if you're looking to fill a good size space, these speakers would be perfect dual purpose speakers where you can use them for hi-fi and you can use them for home theater because they do have the expansiveness to fill a medium to large size room. I tried them in my studio, my living room, and my larger basement, and they filled every room properly. Just pair them with a suitable amplifier and you're off to the races. Uh, associated equipment for this was the Cambridge Audio CXA81 amplifier, the Audiolab 9000A, the Roxana Tessa, both the streamer and the normal integrated amplifier. I tried for a bit of time the uh, Mission 778X integrated amplifier. All of the amplifiers worked really well. The best of the bunch for me was the uh, CXA81 from Cambridge Audio. It just felt like the perfect pairing. It had a just enough dri just enough power to drive these speakers, and um, it had the right sound signature for them. The direct comparisons for the speaker were the Silver 100 from Monitor Audio behind me and the Silver 300. That's more of a slimline floor stander speaker, and that was sort of my end game speaker when I first heard it. So yeah, it's a big speaker, but big is means nothing if, you know, it doesn't sound big. And fortunately, the speaker sounds big. And for the majority of this review, I ran them without a sub, even though I'm a bass fiend, because I really didn't need one. I was shocked by the sheer wall of sound that came out of these speakers. Everything I put through them sounded bigger. They actually do sound like a massive floor stander. I mentioned that wall of sound and... That's really due to three things, and the three things are the three obvious things, the three different drivers on the speaker. The treble with the AMT transducer, one would think would be really bright and brittle or just like really clinical and harsh to the ears, and it's not. Actually, the Silver 100 speaker for Monitor Audio, that comes across as a bit more hot in the treble in comparison. And whatever they did with the crossovers of the speaker, like the treble... It gives you enough air without being overly harsh to your ears. So especially when you turn up the volume, it doesn't ever air on the side of being too bright or too, what's the word, sibilant to your ears. And then the mid range, it really just kind of like pushes the sound out into the room a bit more, not in any sort of forward way, but it just, I guess it, it just really helps things like vocals and like, you know, guitar plucks and all those things kind of just like envelop you a bit more, especially if you're sitting sort of dead center between the speakers. And then, of course, the bass. You will probably read or hear in a lot of reviews that the bass is really prominent. That's mostly due to the fact that the driver for the bass isn't doing double duty as it is with say like the silver 100s where it's doing a bass and mids it's doing bass and just bass and the slot loading port on the bottom of the speaker really helps out with that in that it's able to push way more air and deliver more bass to you so if you are the type of person that wants like a really even sort of sound presentation then you'll do well to pull these speakers out into the room a little bit. But if you're a bass fiend like me, you can just shove them up against a wall and Bob's your uncle. It's going to sound great and you're going to be treated to gobs of bass. And that's probably why I didn't really require a subwoofer for these speakers. While it didn't hit the lowest depths of bass, 
it had more than enough for just day-to-day casual listening. The speaker itself is a bit of a chameleon in that, depending on what amplifier you pair it with, you are treated to a fairly different result. Like the Audiolab 9000A 100 watt per channel amplifier, it's a bit more transparent in nature. And if you want a bit more true to the source as far as whatever source you have connected to the amplifier, you'll get that from these speakers where it's a bit more neutral, it's a bit more uh, flatter sort of sounding and like the vocals are, are pushed a bit more forward, the bass is a bit more recessed. And then if you pair it with the Roxana Tessa, that's a bit brighter. So the AMT transducer gets to work a bit of overtime and you're treated to way more detail up top. Personally, I found that if I turned up the volume with the Roxana Tessa and these speakers, I would cringe a little because like the highs would bother me a bit more. And then if you pair that with the CXA81 from Cambridge Audio, for me, the sweet spot of the amplifier is a bit more warm sounding, a bit more romantic or old school, or it's tuned to my sonic preference. And with these speakers, I'm able to just turn it up to 11 and just just bask in like the, the wall of sound coming at me and really just enjoy the music. The bass is big, uh, it's powerful, it's great. For my money, CXA81, this speaker, golden. So yeah, this is a big ass speaker and it has big ass sound. And if you want a big ass speaker to sit on your bookshelf or on a pair of stands, this is one that you should definitely audition. And again, if you made it this far, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. I'd appreciate it. Thank you.